Gospel of March the 22nd, 2015 A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his, this life, his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves, he must follow me. And where I am, there also will be my servant. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified and I will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was a thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my, sake, but for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death that he would die. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we are going to concentrate this beautiful Sunday to concentrate just on the Gospel. The entire Gospel of John usually is divided in two segments. The first one that culminates, that ends basically with this statement, and the second part that will speak about the hour of the Lord, His glorification. Also John likes to present his Gospel for every Jew and every Christian, and especially for the Jews, to make them understand, to help them understand that all their traditions and everything have become empty without the Lord. The new alliance signed with the blood of the Lamb, the Son of God, is so much greater than the Old Testament and the Old Covenant, that it surpasses with unequal splendor. It is no coincidence that on the Feast of Passover, the greatest of, of all feasts, the Pass of the Lord, the saving Pass of the Lord, the Greeks come to the Lord. These Greeks, we do not, we do not know whether they were some Greek Jews, some proselytes, some the diaspora, from the diaspora, from those living from away, we don't know. But we know that they were Greek. And being Greek, they represent everyone who was not Jew. All of us. It is no coincidence either that they come to Philip and then to Andrew, the two of the disciples, the two of the apostles, that had not Hebrew or Aramaic name, but also Greek names. It is the presentation of the salvation of God for everyone, especially because they ask, we would like to see Jesus. We have to believe that what they were saying, they might have been saying it in Hebrew, or at least, or probably in Aramaic, Yeshua. What they're asking is, we want to see the salvation of God, and thus the answer the Lord answers in such a way that seems to be disconnected, out of the scene. He doesn't say, well, I will see them later, let, let me talk to them, or no. He only says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. What is the hour of the glorification of God, that is, of Jesus Christ, the hour of His death on the cross? That is the time of his glorification. And he is going to develop 
that point. And he starts with this image, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It remains just a grain, but if it dies it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, but whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Jesus himself knew that he needed to die, and in his dying he was going to produce great fruit. But he invites you and me also to die to our own comforts, to die to our own will, if it is separated from the will of God to die to our own personal desires, but to look for the, for the love, for the desire and the will of God Himself, and only that, to live for Him. And that is what must happen to us also, to die as a grain and to produce much fruit that the Holy Spirit will produce out of us once we have been transformed, once we have exchanged our life for the life of the Son of God. Whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there also will be my servant. And my Father will honor him. This, those words are so beautiful. Why do we want to serve the Lord? Because we want to be in heaven. That's why. The Lord has already ascended. That is also part of his glorification. Ever since his ascension, there is a glorified man such as any one of us could be. There is a true man, certainly glorified, but a true man in the presence of the Holy Trinity. And that is the place where he is inviting you and me to come to dwell eternally in the presence of the Holy Trinity with a glorified body also, a body that will not become weak or ill or old, a body that will always be young. Now the Lord shares with us His own humanity. Now that I am troubled, what should I say? Father, save me? It was for this purpose that I came to this hour. And then He shares with us His, limit, his limitation as a human, His fears. How many times we also are fearful of what the Lord asks us and we feel that we are just too small, too feeble. Yet the Lord asks us, go forward, lean on me, glorify, Father, glorify your name. The Father answers to him, I glorify it and I will glorify it again. What is finally the judgment that has been accomplished. It is a judgment of love. The ultimate sign of love is the cross. He has given us that. Yet that love is not a foolish love. It's not a poppy love. It is a mature and grown up love that has to be engaged by us. That is the only possible answer true love from our part, the compromise to become like him, to follow him in his footsteps, fully knowing that after death we will also be resurrected out of love of God. So the ruler has already been driven out of the world. He dwells around us. He still troubles us, but we have the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit to come to victory. When the Lord is lifted up, He will be lifted up on the cross, but especially He will be lifted up as He was on His ascension. And that, dear brothers, is where we all want to be, in heaven. Let us pray the Father humbly that this land that we are going through help us to get closer to the mysteries of His only Son, His passion, His death, and His resurrection. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.